this was going to cure our problems. You know, I was 42,000 pounds in debt. I had no means of repaying that money. I couldn't even think of a way where we could get the money. And you know, I thought, if we continue not to be able to pay the rent on the rented house, eventually they'll take the house away, and then social services will come in and take my four kids. It wasn't going to happen over my dead body, if necessary. The friend, you know, it was, it was underwhelming. I was listening to Allo, I go, yeah, go, 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 go away, leave me alone. I've got enough misery without Allo, what's it? And then he said something that rocked me back on my heels. It's the reason why I'm standing here today. And I'd like to share with you, if I may, what he said to me. It had profound effect. It changed our fortunes. It's changed the lives of literally tens of thousands of people on this planet. He said to me, have you ever wondered why people die broke? I said, what do you mean, why people die broke? He said, well, if you look at the figures from the probate office, 1993, 95% of people who die, die with less than 5,000 pounds in the bank. So they worked hard for 40 years, and they finish up with less than 5,000 pounds. How can that be? He said, because they make one fundamental mistake. They exchange their time for money. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're drilling holes in the road or you're drilling holes in teeth. If you don't drill, you don't earn. And you can only drill for a certain number of hours. But he said, you know, interesting thing, those 5% who don't die broke, he said, one, I know you can't see this, but just follow the chemistry, if you will. One of that 5% inherited it. They had a rich mummy or daddy or an uncle. Well, they had a trust. He said, 3% out of that 5 had a business. And he said, 1% of those people were in a job. And he said, think about it. That means you got a 1 in 100 chance of not dying broke if you're in a job. I'll ask you a question. What would a bookie call a horse running today at Cheltenham at 100 to 1? An outsider, a no-hoper. And that's what people do. They invest against themselves at 100 to 1, and they lose. He said, very simple reason for that. He said they exchanged their time for money. Now remember, this is 1993. He said, let's see how the equation works. He said, let's say you can command in the marketplace 10 pounds an hour. And you can work for 40 hours a week, and you can work for 50 weeks a year. We'll give you a couple of weeks off of good behavior. All right. Your earning potential in your working life Right, this is in a year, but if we then multiply it by another 40 years, the 40-year plan, you've got £800,000, which would be great if you had it in the bank. But we know that 95% of people have got less than 5000 Why is that? Because they make one fundamental mistake. They go out. <laughs> they do, don't they? they? You know, they go to the cinema. They take the kids out. You know, and you measure life by what you do, not by what you've got. Life is for living. Life is for doing. He said, let's have a look at what happens to your 800,000 pounds. He said, how come? You've only got less than 5,000 at the end. He said, you take the 800,000 pounds. He said, there is a thing in the UK. Anybody in a job? Ever heard of P-A-Y-E, poverty as you earn? <laughs> N-H-I, no hope intended. He said that will take about 40% of your 800,000 pounds. Just for one illusory moment, you thought the money was yours, but it's gone. 
the government stole it away from you. So, 800,000 here, 320,000 coming off there. Then he said you could have somewhere to live. We've all got to have somewhere to live. He said, in the UK, currently, we know that will take about 25%. Got to have a roof over your head. A couple of hundred thousand. He said, you've got to live. Heating, lighting, rates, school fares, clothes, all that other garbage. Another 200,000 pounds, leaving you potentially at the end with 80,000 pounds in the bank. But 95% of people would die broke. Because they did make that one fundamental error, they went out. <laughs> but they went out on the basis of 2,000 pounds a year. Have a great time. 166 pounds, 66 pence a month to have a great life. 40 pounds a week or thereabouts to have a great life. And I thought, now I see the flaw in this. I said, look, I said, I'm an ex child of surveyor. I said, the average price of a house in the UK in 1993 is not 200,000, it's 97,000 pounds. He said, not when you paid the interest to the Abbey National. Mm. I said, yeah, but I can command more than 10 pounds an hour in the marketplace. He said, all right, let's say you make 20 pounds an hour. He said, you make twice as much money. You pay twice as much tax and national insurance. Instead of living in a little itsy-bitsy house, you have a slightly bigger house. And instead of sausages and burgers, you have steak and a bottle of wine, and you still finish up broke. He said to me, how many people do you know in a job who have a to-die-for car? Not a GLS or some other crappy company car. A real to-die-for car. It's about one in a hundred, isn't it? He said, how many people do you know who have one of those beautiful houses? You know, the ones you drive past with the big gates and the crunchy gravel drive. How many people do you know in a job? About one in a hundred. He said, how many people do you know who go to die for holidays? Exotic locations. About one in a hundred. That was the moment in 1993. And I thought, I've been had. I've been had. I bought into a system which would almost guarantee I would die broke. I did all the stuff that they told me I should do. I went off to university. I studied. I went into a profession. And here I am after 27 years of my 40-year plan, needing £42,000 to even qualify as broke. <laughs> <laughs> You see, if you keep doing what you've been doing to get the same results, that's technically mad, isn't it? I knew I had to get different results. The question was, how? <laughs>